during all that time was doing heavy metal music, professional musician, clubs, National Guard armories, mm -hmm. boozing it up, living the life of, you know, just a, a heathen. Mm -hmm. How did you meet your, your first wife? The uh, guitar player had, his wife was sister mm -hmm. to my first wife. Okay. And it brought it up to the point where that fire burned me out of everything. And you know, I guess at that time I could show, see time just stand still, mm -hmm. come upon a preacher, mm -hmm. come upon somebody ministering the word out in the wee hours of the morning to drug dealers. Mm -hmm. That Pentecostal preacher, I'm going to help that man do a work, and I told pastor what went on, mm -hmm. and that was pretty much the vow there to help him do a work. Mm -hmm. So I honored the Shabbat and went to Shabbat service. Then when I come home from Shabbat service, they had departed. Within me, already having lost a family, you know, a wife and three children, and here's one coming in, a woman with three children, I thought, you know, because of that emptiness, you know, that this could fill the emptiness. Everybody's inquiring, you know, how did Straightway come about? How did we get to this point? And, and they can tell and sense that it's, it's, it's like um, something is catching fire. You know, it's, it's growing because they can see the happiness, they can see the joy, they see the peace that is being obtained, they can see we're very serious about this walk. So what? So you guys was married for a while. How, how long ago did you guys married? And uh, what what transpired? Where obviously it kind of came to an end. Well, we got married in two thousand three. Okay. And you know, with any marriage, there's ups and downs. You know, we got to learn one another, mm -hmm. learn how to help one another. You know, this is a lot of things in the ministry that's tough on wives, mm -hmm. especially if she's married to a someone that's ordained, mm -hmm. someone that's called, mm -hmm. and that puts a stress on, mm -hmm. on marriage. And then the community itself, mm -hmm. the community has needs, mm -hmm. and then the family has needs, mm -hmm. and that's always weighing in the balance. Mm -hmm. And everything, you know, at times was all right. You know, there would be flare-ups, mm -hmm. you know, women, women in general. <laughs> I'm not, you know, bashing women. Yeah. But there's things that they carry from their past relationships, past experiences, past traumas that, that tend, you know, certain things in another uh, relationship will flare up mm -hmm. and make itself known and have to deal with that. But the biggest turning point with her was uh, polygyny. Mm. The fear, you know, of multiple wives, even though I told her that I was not desiring to, you know, have no more wives than her. Mm -hmm. She was enough, you know, handful in herself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that right there is what I mean. So is it just when pastors start bringing it up that you guys that 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 pretty much like how did it? Yeah, that that when it started coming out, there was other members in, in the body that were like you know like what you know it's like shocking to them and and then these little splinter cells would start showing up these mm -hmm. people that show, sh shared the same grievances mm -hmm. the, the same bitterness and there they would they would all be drawn together mm -hmm. and they would you know speak you know I don't like this and I don't like that and you know they strengthen each other in their hatred and whatever and my wife was friends with some of them and you know and the spitting in the ears took place and and through all that it's things started just ooh, just start splintering mm -hmm. 
and the, I guess the shaking that it brung, it did what it was supposed to do. Mm. It shook those that didn't need to be here, mm -hmm. and the ones that remained, remained. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, you know, this, and I guess from the time of its inception to now, I've seen many shakings. Mm -hmm. And I understand this is even in the will of Yah, when to, as he says in his words, you know, if you're going to get a fruit tree to bring more, much more fruit out, you've got to prune it. You've got to cut it back. And the Most High would do that. And I see even now, you know, we see times where there's a lot of influx of people. And then there was something will come about. And then the, the cutting will take place. Just like during this last uh, dead season. Certain people that come to Tabernacles mm -hmm. and Pastor says, some of you won't be here. Mm -hmm. Coming the next feast. And, and, and it's so true because we have learned that the Most High Yah, as being a good husbandman, this, this is his method, mm -hmm. this is his construct, this is his way. Because he wants solid people, he wants real people, he wants committed people. He wants to really build in us a strong love mm -hmm. one for another. And then I think, you know, that's what appeals to me about community is the, the real realm of love mm -hmm. and family. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that really appealed to me as not having a family you know, in my former walk, in my former construct, and now here I got family that care for me. I don't have to hear the, the discouraging words, the disparaging uh, situations, the the mother and the dad fighting, and all this crap. You know, from childhood, mm -hmm. watching all this stuff, and it, and trying to take it all in and all the sorrow and the hurt and the bitterness just watching family just fall apart and be at one another and now here you got a chance to really love mm -hmm. you know a thing you've been searching for in your early life your former walk now you have a chance to embrace it mm -hmm. and I think that's really what the most I mm -hmm. kind of woke up in me mm -hmm. using what I went through in my former state as a backdrop mm -hmm. to really make the situation now more vivid. Mm -hmm. You even had, you know, with your second wife, I know you got, you had a child mm -hmm. uh, of your own, but she had her three and her child and everything. So when they left, once, you know, one of them stayed behind mm -hmm. uh, with, with you. Can you please share? That would be Elias. Mm -hmm. Because Elias, he, he's a very unique, unique uh, son. Mm -hmm. And I love him very much. Because mm -hmm. from my youth on, now this is, and just want to make it for the record, this is your stepson because, yeah, yeah but, but your daughter uh, ended up going with you, the one that you had with her. Yeah. Okay. Ended up going on mm -hmm. with, with the mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Elias seems to say there was something about him that was different than the rest of them because he, he loved the Word, mm -hmm. even from a very young boy. And it started him with an ethic of working at a very young age, and he took on to it like he would deliver wood to the saints, you know, at a very young age, at, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, he had a, already a work ethic built in him, mm. and he would read the word, and he had a, a hunger and thirst mm. for the word, mm. and I think that's what kept him here, because mm. with that background of the word in him, and he's seeing what's going on around him, he knows that going back with his mom would not be fruitful. Mm will not be profitable. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he stayed, and, um, what, and, and, and have you talked to any of the children or your daughter since they've left? Uh, intermittently. Intermittently, okay. It's been like two years now since I've had any communication. Any communication, okay. So you've been, I mean, you've you suffered a lot, you know, being in this truth. I mean, you had, you had your first family, they left. Mm -hmm. Then you come into it and you meet a woman and, you know, with their children here in the faith and then they leave and you're still even with all this shaking mm -hmm. you still there what what would you tell you know this you know I mean Pastor Dow was talking about that if it wasn't for the people like his wife Mother Carol and you guys that, that was there in the beginning there wouldn't be a straight way mm -hmm. what is the secret from your perspective of the longevity I mean to, to, to walk this walk what is what would you tell the people that, that is coming behind what was the secret for you to be able to continue to walk in this walk that you can encourage the next generation that's coming behind you? Trust in the Most High. Mm. That thing that has helped me. Mm. 
in every instant, every sorrow, every deep hurt, I have learned to really just put everything at his feet. And if it wasn't for him and his word being in me and the Holy Spirit there to strengthen me through all this, I would have perished too. Mm. And I, I've held on to his word and his way to a point now where I don't know any other way. I've lived it so long. I've stayed in it so much. I've trusted it so much. And I even ask myself, could you live without the Most High? And I say, no, I, I, I almost want to cry if the Most High was taken out of my life. You know, I, it's just Him in me and bringing me through all this, Him strengthening me in my weaknesses and giving me that support when I need it. He was always there. His Word was always there. His truth was always there. It's more than just words on a paper now. I understand His life. Because if I'm going to really walk as he walked, as the Bible says, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, you're going to suffer. And my former construct would tell me suffering since I go to booze and I go to drink and I go to something to supply my need to help get my mind off that. And now I have a different substance to go to. I have real substance. I have someone to turn to. I can get on my knees and no matter what state of mind I'm in, I can just bring it to Him. Mm -hmm. And He will supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. And, he, and that He said He would. He said if you would hold Him at His word, that word, it's the little ink on the paper. If you would hold Him at that word, then He, then he is faithful and just to perform it. And, and because of just doing that, holding Him at His word, I've seen actually whatever's written in that book take on a form. I see, you know, the hope that I had in me come to where I could touch and feel it. It was real. It, it gave me purpose. It gave me structure. It gave me something to reach for. It gave me joy that I've never had before. Joy that I was hunting for in my former walk. The joy that wasn't there. Everything that I was missing there, I was thinking drugs and, and boozing and smoking and everything I was doing was going to fill that. But still, there was still that emptiness. It just was, I was a shell of a man. And until Most High put His Spirit in me, then I understood who He was. And because I understood who He was, then he st started me, helping me understand what my purpose was to serve him. And he, he's, through all this walk, he showed me how to be a servant. And he's called me to be a teacher, especially in this time. And calling is, is a very unique thing in itself. And I think it was the calling that helped me so much, even to the point of 2015, all before that time, I was resisting, resisting, resisting that calling, even though I was told, I, you're a teacher, you're a teacher. And I was in, within myself fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, until I just finally surrendered and said, okay, Most High, uh, if, if that's w how you want me to serve, I will serve. With, you know, uh, Pastor Dow, you know, obviously he's been, you, you've seen him... <laughs> From, from the streets, you know, preaching, you know, midday or mm -hmm. in the middle of the night with the, with the drug dealers or whatever, and to now, you know, did you ever imagine that the ministry uh, back then would look like the way it looks like today? No, I didn't. I didn't have no thought of that in my mind. Mm. I, I just, I, it's almost like I had a surety going into this, not knowing what was coming afterwards. Mm. Even though I walking into something, you know, I really couldn't touch, taste, feel, and smell. It, you got to really trust Yah for a lot of things in this walk. Many of us trust in our own hearts, our own minds, the things of this world. And I, I, I've seen everything that I trusted in this world in ashes. Mm. You know, like I said, that was my Berean moment mm. when everything, everything becoming living color. Mm. And that set my feet on the path that, that he wanted me in. Mm -hmm. And th through all this walk, I've learned how selfish I've been, how bitter I've been. 
and all the ungodly stuff, you know, that the Holy Spirit showed me. It gives me a place to get this stuff removed so that I can love, that I can serve, so that I can understand who He is and why He called me to this purpose. Mm. What do you appreciate about Pastor Dowdy's leadership all the years? I mean, you've seen, I'm assuming you've seen the good times, the bad mistakes or change or growth. And I mean, he had to grow into his, mm -hmm. into his calling. What do you appreciate about the man, Pastor Charles Dow Jr.? Steadfastness, mm. unwavering, mm. holding the line. Because mm. I've seen a lot of things that could shake a lot of people. I've seen a whole lot. And I think the most high for pastor, because he's taught me how to be a man when I, you know, the lack that my dad had, mm. that he wasn't there, he was all the time away. So I had no f father figure in my life. And now the Most High I put a father figure in my life, showing me how to be a man, you know, give me the construct and, and the ways and the purpose to being a man. And then, you know, that built, that built a lot of respect in me for him. And because he was steadfast, unwavering, and... It was a beautiful thing just having that same fellowship, mm -hmm. to seeing a man stay that firm, you know, propel me, okay, you can do the same thing. You know, if the spirit of Yah in him can keep him to that point, it, the same can happen in you. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, you hear a lot of um, people levy charges against Pastor Dow, you know? I mean, you, you yourself, you worked at Walmart for mm. over t 21 years, yes. right? You know, you live in community. You, you, you literally lay money at his feet. Mm -hmm. you, you give your paycheck. People are saying, people like you are, you know, forced to, to give your money up or uh, Pastor Dow is, a, um, is oppressing the people that he leads and everything. When you hear all of these charges levy up, how does that make you feel? What, I mean, how, how do you... Um, feel when you hear people saying that or how do you respond when you hear things like that I just uh, by experiencing and knowing what I know through all the experience of the years a lot of that stuff don't really bother me because mm. I know the true purpose and the true heart of what's really taking place so a lot of that stuff is like you know water on ducks back because mm. they don't know mm. they've not been in the experience they do not have the same uh purpose of Yah in them. Mm -hmm. They do not have a vision set before them to help fulfill. Mm -hmm. They don't have no hope. I understand that a lot of people, they read the Bible, but they don't. It's just like an external wonder. Mm -hmm. They're just people walking on the outside. Mm -hmm. And they don't really un understand the, the mechanics and the workings and the movings of the Spirit of Yah because they're not involved. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, how would you, if you, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, you've been doing this for a long time. You've been in it in the beginning and you have said, I mean, you, I mean, obviously with Pastor Dow leading, but you supporting that man, we have a straight way for people like myself mm -hmm. coming into the stuff. If you can talk to the next generation, as you, I just give you the floor. If you, if you, if you was talking to the next generation, what would you want to, if you was your last word and you wanted to encourage them in this walk, because obviously, You've been doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. so you've seen a lot. You continue to press on. You continue to you know, stand firm to the end. How would you encourage the next generation? You know, If you had to give them the last word, what would you tell them to encourage them? I would say look on the world as it is. And do you like seeing what's going on in the world? Do you want a life of death like they're living? Do you want to perish like they perish? Or you want to go to a place where there is no pain, there's no suffering, there's no hurt? Do you want to continue in running away from your traumas and from your fears and from your pains and from your shortcomings, or do you want to meet them head on and overcome them? Do you want to really understand your purpose on this earth? Because a lot of people don't understand their, this, their purpose on the earth. Re why am I created for this time? <clears throat> Why am I understanding this this most high? How come, you know, of me of all people, you know, rest of my family don't know him, but I know him. 
Uh, my encourage you to keep knowing Him. You won't get to a richer understanding in Him unless you stay in this walk, suffer the sufferings, go through the pains, go through the hurts, go through the trials, go through the tribulations. Because we've got to train our mind as it was in the beginning that we are here, we are people of life. We are people in the light. We are children of the day. And we know how it is to live in darkness. Because a lot of us, we have a background of living in sin, living in transgression, living in iniquity. And the Most High I, even as you as a chosen vessel to be a child here, He lets you go through that so it can be a backdrop for what is going on now. And my encouragement to you is stay in the Word of Yah because it will direct your feet. It will direct your paths. Trust in Him. He will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory because He's never failed me. Mm. And whatever I've lacked, He's always been there especially things of my spirit, things of the inner man. Because can, we can all look at ourselves and, and see that this body, it, it is deteriorating. It's getting old. It, it's losing strength. So what is in us that's going to be eternal? We need to really reach for the things of the internal, the things that are in the world to come, which we have been subjected to, which the world which the world does not understand, but we understand because of the Word, because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. We know within ourselves and our heart the one that, that hung on a tree and gave Himself for us. And if we're really going to have a fellowship with Him, we're going to have to fellowship through His sufferings. We're going to, we're going to have to endure loss. If you really want Him, you're going to have to endure loss, but the loss is a gain. No matter how much you lose in, 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 in this walk, he said you will gain 30, 60, 100 fold. Even though it, now I might not have you know, a wife and children now, and though I got family, I have sisters and brothers and mothers and fathers. I have real family. Family that really love, family that really care, family that are there for you. A lot of us have come out of dysfunctional families. I mean, I don't know we can really call it a family. But now you have, you have the privilege, you have the grace now to enter into a real family. A family that the Most High I is gathering together in this last time. Because the time is short. And the Hasatan, the God of this world... His, his time being so short, we can see, we can look upon the world scene and see all this homosexuality and everything going, all the perverseness that's against the image of Yah that's right there before our eyes as a witness. And we as the people of Yah, we know that's not for us. And we should turn away from that. And the only strength that we're going to have to keep us away from that is trusting in the Most High God. He's the only power. He's the only source. He's the only strength that we should get in our mind, in our being, that that's where our substance comes from. Without Him, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. He is our sufficiency. With food, raiment, shelter, clothing, there's where the contentment should be. But the world out here has so much to offer. But it's death. But I tell you, if you want to really know life, if you want to really know love, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, patience, faith, the, the rich man, they would pay millions and millions and millions of dollars to just have just a taste of it, just a little drop on their lips. And now here we are in, in, in the family of Yah, and it's there right before us to do to take hold. Yes, sir. Well, Teacher Shane, it was truly an honor to have you as a guest, and thank you for so much for doing this interview. Thank Bless you. you. Shalom. 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 Shalom.